Several months back, I picked up this Macintosh 2SI computer off Craigslist. You might remember the video I posted on it. And for the most part, it's been neglected and sitting in my closet while I play with its older cousin, the Apple IIgs. Well, this week I decided to take out that old Mac and use it as a file server for my 2GS. Now, what madness is this, you ask? Well, yes, you can actually use older Macs as external hard drives as well as a means to connect to the Internet. After looking at some instructions online, I thought it'd be a fun little project, and so I decided to try it out. So the first order of business was making sure I had all the necessary resources, namely a Macintosh running OS 6 or 7, a 2GS, and the all-important printer cable that is going to connect these two machines. So that part was pretty easy, since I already had all those things. Next, I needed to get my hands on AppleShare File Server version 3 for the Mac, which apparently was the last version of AppleShare that supported networking Apple IIs. Let me go ahead and boot up the machine so you can see what that software looks like. Now, getting this software wasn't too difficult, but trying to figure out a way to convert it to a file format that I could actually send through my PC to the 2GS so I could make the HFS disk images, that was pretty difficult, and I had to get some help online to do that. Once I had those images, I was able to install them on the Macintosh. But then I ran into another hurdle where, for whatever reason, the installer wasn't recognizing one of the disk images. I could see the contents, but the installer just wasn't seeing it. So I spent about an hour trying to figure that out and never did. So I ended up just manually moving those files from the disk to the areas of the system that they needed to be in, and that seemed to work fine. After that, it was pretty much all smooth sailing. After about an hour of exciting disk swapping action, I was remote booting my 2GS through the Macintosh. So here's some backup copies of those installer files. Not that I'm really going to need them again. And for the most part, I depended on the documentation online to really step me through this process. There's a lot of good instructions that I can post in my uh, description. But the software itself did come with its own documentation, and it was pretty useful as well. So let me go ahead and show you what the server software looks like. And there's two different programs that I'm going to be opening. And the first one is this Apple Share Admin. And this is where I actually provision my users and assign security to them, you know, tell them if they can just read documents or if they can actually modify and create folders and that sort of thing. And it also lets me tell them where they can where their default uh, area is going to be when they log in. So to do that, you just, well first you have to select the user that you want to set up the permissions for. And here you can tell them what you want their startup application to be. And you want to put Finder as their startup app, otherwise they're just going to get a basic prompt. And then you also want to make sure you set up your server preferences to have the Apple II startup enabled. And that's what's going to allow the Apple II GS to communicate with the Macintosh. So I already have it checked, so I'm good to go. And so next, I'm actually going to open up the AppleShare file server. And this is where the server actually starts up. And after that, I can go ahead and boot up my Apple II GS. So the Apple Share server is up and running. So everything is set up from the Mac end of things. But when I boot up my 2GS, you're going to see that I still have one last order of business. So the 2GS is going to yell at you, check startup device. So what does that mean? Well, it means you need to set it up to communicate through Apple Talk. If you want to go to your control panel, go to your slots section, and in the ROM 3 2GS, you want to switch slot 1 to Apple Talk and make sure you switch the startup device to Apple Talk as well. And with that, I'm going to reboot it. And now everything should be working. And you can see those dotted lines in the upper left. That's a good sign. And then you're going to get the screen starting up over the network. So 
So then the 2GS is looking for available servers and it's going to find the one on my Mac. So I just need to log in using my credentials. So at this point you might want to go grab a cold one or run your afternoon errands or something because you're going to be sitting here a while. It takes a long time to boot over the network and that's because of the limited data transfer speed of the cable that you're using. So really what are the advantages and disadvantages of booting over the network like this? Well I definitely say the advantage is price. I mean old Macintoshes with a few exceptions are pretty much a dime a dozen. A lot of times I see them in the free section of Craigslist. The Macintosh I'm using cost me $25 and it came with a whole bunch of other goodies including that radius display monitor. But the disadvantage, well, I think you're seeing it, speed. I mean, if you're not a patient person, you probably want to go through a SCSI or a compact flash type solution. Still, I think it's neat that this is possible and it is an alternative. And with the power of video editing, I'm going to go ahead and speed things up for you. So as you can see, I am logging into my desktop. And on there I see a hard drive, and that contains folders from the Macintosh. So this is all on the network. And I've created a folder called 2GS Stuff, which contains 2GS Stuff. So if I look back on the Macintosh, you can see that same hard drive. And if I open it up, it's exactly the same folders I was just viewing as a 2GS user. So there's the 2GS Stuff folder and there's all my stuff. So if you want to manage your users, you know, change their security, you just select them from the user list, go to privileges, access information, and here you can see that this user can view and modify files and folders, and that's where you can change those security settings if you wanted to. Under the Apple Share File Server, that's where I can actually shut down the server if I wanted to. And this is also where I can view how long the users have been connected and all the users that are connected. But before I shut down the server, I do want to show you that it actually works. So let me launch one of these programs. So let me just play Laser Force, or at least view the main screen on it. And I mean, it's working just as if it was an internal hard drive or if it was playing off of a floppy disk. It's just going to take a little bit longer because it's communicating with the Mac through that slow cable. And there you can see the game comes up just fine. So at this point, let's go ahead and shut down the server so you can see what that looks like from the 2GS user's perspective. So I can either just shut off the server per user, or I could just quit the application altogether. If I do that, it's going to warn me, okay, do I want to shut it off for all users instantly, or do I want to give them a couple minutes? I'll give them five minutes to log off. And then the countdown begins, and from the 2GS screen, you can see that it warns them, letting them know it's going to shut down in five minutes. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video on remote booting a 2GS. Thanks for watching.